If you've fixed Willie's boat and paid him to take you to Ginger Island, you might notice a little shack on the far west side. This shack belongs to Birdie, an old woman with a purple bow tie and a starfish in her hair dedicated to preserving the memory of her late husband. He set sail one day, she recalls, never to return. Since then, she's walked along the beach every day to see if anything new has washed up, his wrecked ship on the south shore a constant reminder of her loss. When you first speak to her, she tells you she's looking for a keepsake of his, something to bring her some peace. Shortly after, she gives you an old photograph of a soldier that she found on one of her many walks along the beach. This photograph leads you on a gift-giving journey that includes nearly everyone in town. You go from Kent to Gus to George and pay a visit to the wizard, eventually receiving a wriggling worm. This worm just so happens to be the perfect catfish bait for Willy, and as luck should have it, he trades it to you for a pirate's locket. THE pirate's locket, which once belonged to Birdie's husband. But that's the big question, isn't it? Who does this locket belong to? Who is Birdie's husband? Well, I think I've figured it out. The crazy thing is, if you've ever married someone in Stardew Valley, you've met him. If you've ever stayed the night at the island farmhouse, you've been in the same room as him. Today, I'll be telling you exactly who it is and exactly how he and Birdie lost each other in the first place. This is the story of the lost pirate. Okay, so when I started trying to figure this out, I thought it would be easy. Like, let's look at all the characters from Stardew Valley. It's Birdie's husband, so right from the get-go, that rules out quite a few candidates. It's most definitely not any of the Bachelors or Vincent, since they probably weren't even alive yet when Birdie was of marriageable age. I mean, look at her. And some of the men in the town, like Kent and Demetrius, are already married, so we're left with Gunther, Lewis, uh, Krobus. But we're also left with one very promising candidate. Marlin. I mean, look, he's got an eye patch. He says he lost his eye in the caves, but he never specifies which caves. It very well might have been the caves on Ginger Island when he was with Birdie. Additionally, right behind the counter in the Adventurer's Guild, he has a map with a classic red X marking where some treasure might be hidden. And despite clearly saying that he never misses any of the town festivals, he isn't in attendance at all during the Moonlight Jellies Festival, and during the Luau, he stays far, far away from the shoreline. Perhaps he's afraid of the water due to his involvement in a terrible, traumatizing shipwreck. That would also explain why out of all the villagers, he lives the absolute furthest away from the Gem Sea. So yeah, Marlin is a seemingly perfect fit. He's about the right age, has a rugged, adventurous demeanor that suits a pirate, and a suspicious aversion to the ocean. And you know, I could definitely see Marlin and Birdie living happily together. But there's one glaring issue here that brings this entire Marlin theory crumbling down. See, when you talk to Birdie, she says it took her, um, <laughs> three years sailing the high seas to find his remains. Birdie's husband is dead, and she even has his bones, so that rules out any living villager in Pelican Town with bones. Alright, so let's regroup and review the facts. Birdie's husband is most certainly one, dead, two, a pirate, and three, the captain of the wrecked ship on Ginger Island. After hours reading through the Stardew wiki, I realized that the answer is even more fitting than Marlin. And like I said before, if you've ever married anyone in Stardew Valley, you've already met him. That's right. Birdie's husband is Lewis. No, just kidding. But Lewis does play a big part by sending you a letter telling you that to ask for someone's hand in marriage, you'll need to give them a mermaid's pendant. Don't worry, he says. Everyone in Pelican Town understands the significance of the amulet. It's an ancient tradition in this region. In one of the lost books, too, paid by Pierre, it reads that on stormy days, it's rumored that the ghost of an old mariner appears, clutching just such a pendant. And yeah, that's our man. Birdie's husband is the old mariner who sells you the mermaid's pendant on the eastern side of the beach. And you know what? I can even tell you his name. But I'm sure you're skeptical. I mean, how could I possibly know this? Well, for starters, he talks like a pirate. Ah, I can see it in your eyes. There be a special someone in your heart. Just so happens I'm selling a mermaid's pendant. Give that to your intended and they'll know exactly what you mean. Some of the most substantial evidence, however, lies in the journal scraps you find scattered around Ginger Island. These journal scraps are written by a sailor who washed ashore, documenting his story of survival on the island. I have good reason to believe that this sailor is Birdie's husband and therefore the old mariner. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Journal scrap number one. Day one. My ship is lost, shattered by a tempest in the unforgiving sea. I find myself stranded now on these strange shores. My crew is perished, but I still live. 
I believe that this ship, shattered by a storm, is the wrecked ship you see on the southern shores of Ginger Island. Birdie says that her husband was the captain of that ship, which checks out because the author of the journal scrap says that his crew had perished, his ship had gone down, leaving only him. If that's not enough evidence, the author of these journal scraps must be a pirate because nothing says pirate more than a map with a red X to mark a buried treasure, and journal scraps 4, 6, and 10 are all treasure maps. Plus, journal scrap number 9 is about, like, sirens and mermaids and black gold's treasure, so pretty piratey, if you ask me. So with all this in mind, we now have evidence that the sailor that wrote these journal scraps was a pirate, and not just any pirate, but Birdie's husband, the captain of the wrecked ship. And what's another word for sailor? Mariner, perhaps? But let's take a step back. How did Birdie's husband even get the mermaid pendant, and how did he end up in Pelican Town? Well, I think this is how it goes. Birdie's husband was the captain of a ship in search of Black Gull's treasure. But one day, a huge storm broke out, sending his ship crashing into the Ferngill Islands. Everyone perished, except him. He builds a new life on Ginger Island, and he writes his experience in a tattered journal that survived the shipwreck. I've no choice but to make a life for myself here, he writes. There's fresh water in abundance, food to forage, and fertile soil to work. He learns about the island, the parrots, the golden walnuts, even the strange machines in the volcano. He builds a shelter and finds others living on the island as well. Perhaps Lady Luck has blessed these wicked bones of mine, he ponders, or has her own designs for my fate. And Lady Luck certainly had plans of her own, because while exploring the island, he meets Birdie, and they soon fall in love. Together, they create the Pirate Cove, a way to remember his former days as a captain. We know that he first discovered the Hidden Cove on his second day on the island, writing about how he caught a stingray in the caves by the southeast shore, the Pirate's Cove being the only place to catch stingrays. Birdie and her husband had a wonderful life on Ginger Island. He gifted her a mermaid's pendant, and they became a married couple. But Birdie's pirate husband still longed for the sea. He was thirsty for adventure, and soon enough, he set off to find one, taking Birdie's mermaid pendant as a keepsake to remember her, and setting out on a small rowboat, much like the one we see in the pond of the Pirate's Cove. The pirate was on the open seas once more, but this journey would go as poorly as the last. Torrential downpour and a terrible storm would hit the pirate's small makeshift boat, and this time, he wouldn't survive. His body washed ashore on the eastern part of the Pelican Town beach with a mermaid's pendant around his neck the place his spirit has remained ever since. There are some key steps to accessing the Old Mariner when looking to purchase the mermaid pendant. You have to repair the bridge to access the eastern side of the beach, arrive before 7pm, and it has to be raining. And that last part is incredibly important. When it comes to the pirate, rain is usually associated with bad things, and the absence of rain is associated with good things. The Old Mariner only appears on the beach when it's raining because it was raining when his final ship wrecked. Although this is speculative, I think the fact that the mermaid on Ginger Island only appears when it's raining may indicate that it was the mermaid, or a mermaid, that distracted the members of the pirate's first ship, leading to their crash. And because of all the tragedy associated with rainy days, the death of the pirate being one of them, this is the reason why Birdie can never be found when it rains. It can't be a coincidence either that the Pirate's Cove is only open on sunny, clear days. I mean, wouldn't it even make more sense for it to be open when it's raining? Because, like, you can't sail during storms? However, the old mariner lives on not just as the ghost that sells the mermaid's pendant. I also believe that the island farmhouse you repair on Ginger Island was the old mariner's house that he shared with Birdie, the very site where he started his survival shelter. There's a bit of unused text in the game code that reveals a tattered journal in the drawer of the island farmhouse, probably the one that once held the journal scraps you find around the island. Maybe this is why Birdie never goes near the island farmhouse. The shipwreck down shore is only a reminder of her husband's death, and the abandoned island farmhouse a remnant of their past life together. There are also a ton of sprites that never got used in the game but are still in the code, and one such sprite sheet is called angryroger.xnb. The sprite was a ghost of sorts, looking nothing like the old mariner, but on the bottom you can see a more human figure, wearing a hat and an outfit that looks all too familiar. And so this is the other piece of the puzzle. The old mariner's name is Roger, and he's most likely angered by the decades he spent as a ghost, trapped between the world of the living and the world of the dead, stuck on a beach with the pendant of his beloved, never to return to her. The only thing he can do is to wait on that beach and sell his mermaid pendant to someone worthy who can use it.
Even decades later, Birdie still walks the shores of Ginger Island every day in search of anything to keep as a reminder of her husband. As fate would have it, Willie would find his locket and trade it to you for a wriggling worm. And so, that's the story of Angry Roger, the old mariner, Birdie's pirate husband, and the owner of the pirate's locket. If this theory is correct, it's pretty cool that the only way to get married in the game is with the help of Birdie's husband. It's kind of poetic, really, like a relationship that ended in tragedy begins a new one. Although the pendant is undoubtedly a treasured possession, I believe that Roger would want to help others to experience the joy and love that he himself felt in the happiest of times while he was still living with Birdie. Even after you've bought the pendant, you can still find him standing on the beach, doomed to an eternity on the shore where his ship crashed all those years ago. Separated from his love, but also hopefully a bit more fulfilled knowing that he selflessly helped you to grow closer with your own. Well, that's all I have today, so leave a comment and let me know what you think about this theory. I'm really interested to see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!